Well, there is Byron. There's a little sleepy face peering out from behind the tree. Little Intima is having a very lazy afternoon by the looks of it. And isn't that a happy hyena? It seems to as though it's even got a smile on its face as it lies in the sun. As you can see it's perfectly positioned that the tree is providing a little bit of shade around the eyes and body in the sun. And there we go. Isn't that cool? Such a beautiful den this. It's one of my favorite places to come. I really like this den. It's big, it's got shade, and it really is a pretty place to spend the afternoon. I enjoy watching the hyenas in this area and enjoy seeing them on this mound. And hopefully we'll find ribbon and varying others coming a little bit later. And that will definitely cause Intima to start perking up and get into a little bit more of a playful mood. I think it's in all likelihood been playing most of the morning and is now having a serious nap before afternoon playtime begins. Hello. Oh, what's that? Bree Bree, you say smiling. Well, it did look like it, didn't it? The way it was, it's just kind of the jaw was pulled up slightly that it looked like a little smile on its face. But those look like very tired eyes, don't they? It's almost as soon as the head hits the ground, eyes are closing shut. And <laughs> are you tired, little one? Has it been a long day? It seems like it. But isn't that just the cutest thing? And this is one of the reasons why I love den sites, because everybody that has the false sort of view of hyenas, this is what you need to see, is a cute hyena like this to just break that sort of myth of them, of them being these horrible sort of creatures that maim and kill and are, have no sort of soul or life to them. Spending the time around the den and watching little ones has got to change your mind as to what hyenas are and how amazing they can be. I think it was Travi, I didn't hear exactly right, but if it was Travi, you were asking why her hyenas change den so often. Thank you, Chantel, that is correct. You were asking why they change den so often, and the reason they change den so often is because you must remember that these guys are not like humans that have vacuum cleaners and cloths and cleaning products that they can clean out their home and make it smell better. These guys, unfortunately, they go into a termite mound and they'll defecate, they'll urinate. Bits of meat will be brought back to the den if they're higher ranking. And we've seen bits of carcasses actually at this den site already. And so that will cause a smell to develop inside the hole. And that smell is going to eventually attract other predators. So it will attract things like lion and leopard. And that will make the little ones unsafe. And there's also going to be a really massive buildup of fleas inside there. And potentially mites and ticks and all kinds of things. Remember when a tick lays its larvae, there's going to be thousands inside there. And so it eventually becomes a place that's just too dirty and too full of stuff to be safe for these little guys. And so they then get moved off onto another den. It also depends on the ranking of them. Sometimes higher ranking individuals will come and take over the den site if it's a favorable den, evict the others. That's not so common, but it does happen from time to time. It's more just that you get a buildup of nasty things and smells, and they then just look for a cleaner area for their little ones to spend their time. So that's why the den does change frequently. But remember that the Philemon's Cutline Den was active for about four months before they changed it, and this one is already going on over a month that they've been here. In fact, it might have been longer. We only found it a month ago. So, you know, they spend a fair amount of time at the dens. They don't move dens nearly as much as what the wild dogs do. So wild dogs, you'll find every sort of three weeks, they changing their den, sometimes even shorter. I've seen wild dogs spend three days in a den and move on. So they tend to have a lot more frequent changes to their den sites than what the hyenas do, but it is a necessary thing to be able to make sure things are clean. So there's the actual den is inside there. Tiffany, you say it looks just like a teddy bear and so cute. Well, that's actually why one of the hyena young ones that was in this area was named Teddy. You named that one Teddy, didn't you, Seb? Mm -hmm. It was you, yes. And it's because they do look like teddy bears, baby hyenas, particularly when they are still black in coloration. They have that sort of teddy bear look to them, little round ears and this dark muzzle and these cute eyes. So they very much are like little teddy bears when they're small. I wonder if our buffalo are not going to get here, because the buffalo, I'd say, probably 
in walking time if the buffalo are carried on walking if they would walk here maybe take them five to ten minutes to get here it'd be interesting to see what Intima's reaction would be to buffalo i wonder if she's actually ever seen them i'm sure she has but it would be interesting to know given that we've had so few buffalo around what the reaction would be to a buffalo and see if she would actually sort of have a different reaction to any of the other animals I've seen elephants around the den sites and generally what happens is these guys see, as soon as they see another animal they run into the hole and they go and hide away but Intima is getting a little bit older now and a little braver and maybe she'll actually just stop and watch and see what goes on it would be really interesting though to watch what happens but that is the picture of happiness right now Francisco, you're asking if a spotted hyena would be able to have or get into a conflict with a male lion and come out victorious, I would imagine, is what you are asking. Now, I would say no, one on one, there's no chance, unfortunately. A male lion is a much, much larger creature, much more powerful, and one on one, you're going to find a lion's going to win pretty much 99% of the time. But if you have numbers game, if you find that you have maybe five or six hyenas and a weakened male lion maybe a male lion that's very old that's got an injury then yes the hyenas can win but one-on-one -on -one, there is no ways ever it's an animal like i said it's almost three times the size of a hyena so it's really a huge difference in terms of power to weight and you're going to find that a hyena unfortunately is going to get a hiding from a lion if it's a one-on-one -on -one contest but that's why hyenas are so successful is that they have this ability to be able to group together and then challenge for carcasses and even dominate lions in some areas you'll find in some parks in in africa hyenas are the most dominant species they'll outcompete lions tenfold and actually the lions sometimes scavenge from the hyenas rather than the other way around so it just depends on numbers and you'll find the more numbers then hyenas can start to dominate what goes on and if you go to elephant plains and some melee with that massive clan that they've got there that clan dominates all the lions in fact most of the lions they get pushed off their carcasses and that clan hunts for themselves and it's a very different system to what we see here with the juma clan that is much smaller and a lot more intimate and they have to kind of scavenge a lot more than what we see on the other side even though it's so close those hyenas have somehow been a lot more successful and i think it's got to do with the lack of male lions that have been around that area for some time the majingalans and the birminghams and the matimbas didn't really spend too much time in that north northern corner of similar media elephant plains and it allowed that clan to really grow unhindered whereas on this side this juma clan has had to deal with the matimbas and the birminghams and the majingalans for a lot longer and unfortunately their numbers just haven't quite grown in the same way but it's good to see that at least we've got another one that is starting to continue this clan and hopefully this clan will get to grow unfortunately we know that it that two adults potentially from this clan are, are, are no longer with us or at least an adult and a sub-adult there was that hyena that was around Tamboti Dam that was unfortunately died and then the Birminghams reportedly killed a sub-adult hyena as well which I would imagine must be from this clan so it's going to be interesting to see how this clan does and ultimately they've had a bit of bad luck but hopefully they'll start banding together and every time we see a young one like this growing up it's always encouraging that the clan is growing and starting to get a little bit bigger